Many Mario fans know about the television adaptation of the Super Mario video game series, the Super Mario Brothers Super Show, produced by Deke Entertainment in 1989. For those unaware, each episode of the show started with Mario and Luigi in live-action skits, played by the late Lou Albino and Danny Wells, as well as a different celebrity guest star starring each episode. This would then be followed by an animated segment featuring the Mario Brothers, alongside Princess Toadstool and Toad trying to keep the Mushroom Kingdom from being taken over by King Koopa, the main villain of the show, and an early version of the Bowser we see today. The animated segment was the main focus of each episode, taking up most of the runtime, while the live-action segments only lasted for a couple of minutes at the beginning of each episode and the end. The animated segment was the focus of each episode, taking up most of the runtime, while the live-action segments only lasted a couple of minutes at the beginning and the end of each episode. The show only ran for one season, but was immediately followed up with two other Mario cartoons, The Adventures of Super Mario Bros. 3 in 1990 and Super Mario World in 1991. These shows ditched the live-action skits completely and focused entirely on only the animated adventures of the Mario Brothers and their friends. However, what if I told you that during the run of the Super Mario Brothers Super Show, there was also another Mario-related television series that was a spin-off featuring another prominent character of the show? Well, airing on the KCTV Fox Loving Kids program in Southern California and running from September 11th to November 20th in 1989 for a total of 65 episodes, there was a show reminiscent of Bozo the Clown, the show that Percy the Clown is a parody of, featuring a Mario character giving away prizes and showing public domain cartoons from the 1920s and 1930s, and the show has been gone largely unnoticed and overlooked by the general public. In this show, I am going to talk about the story and the search for this lost DIC television show, King Koopa's Cool Cartoons. King Koopa's Cool Cartoons was one of the last shows to have a general format in the tradition of classic children's television shows in the same vein of shows like Bozo the Clown, Howdy Doody, or The Mickey Mouse Club. Unlike any other Mario television series, the show contained no animated segments of its own whatsoever and was instead fully live action. An episode would begin with the same pre-recorded theme song, which would then be followed by a live action studio audience of somewhere from 40 to 60 kids that came from all around Los Angeles who were called Koopa Troopas by the show. The audience of children were all given special hats shaped like Koopa heads and t-shirts with Koopa's Troopas printed on them. The children would actually keep the shirts, but the Troopa helmets, as they called them, were claimed by the producers at the end of taping and reused every show. Koopa would then start by talking to the audience with a different episode theme each day. The live-action Koopa would then ask as, MP as MC, introducing animated public domain shorts from the 1920s and 30s, wrapped around a variety of different live-action segments, including a segment with Ratso, King Koopa's pet rat, who seems to be entirely unrelated from the Super Mario with Super Show, Mauser. A segment with King Koopa reading fan mail, a segment with a character called Mr. Mean Jeans, and a joke segment. King Koopa would then end the show by telling the audience to be a good Koopa, or he would Koopa Yupa, not sure what that means. After that, he would then give the contestants prizes, such as a power glove with an envelope given by Ratso, King Koopa's pet rat. Aside from full length episodes, Koopa would also butt in between other Fox Kids cartoons, such as Muppet Babies. The show featured an actor in a King Koopa costume similar to the one previously used in the Super Mario Brothers themed Ice Capades show, only with a more detailed mask to make the actor look more believable on television. The actor playing King Koopa performed the role with a gruff, gravel-voiced Fox male villains that ultimately revealed a hesitantly nice personality. For the first half of the show's airing, King Koopa was played by Christopher Collins, mostly known for playing Cobra Commander in G.I. Joe, and Mr. Burns in Season 1 of The Simpsons. Christopher Collins was apparently hard to work with. According to Eleanor Burry and Moore, there was an episode where he said he wanted kisses from his fans and we dropped Hershey's kisses on him. The audience, who was mostly African American that day, stormed the stage. He fended them off with his scepter and said, Live on TV, no delay. Where are you kids from? Be off or something? I was in the booth urging the TD, who was dumbfounded, to cut to the commercial. Yeah, that was the beginning of the end for him. He was at our house for the Halloween party, but he had already been fired, so that helps us pinpoint how long he lasted. 
Every time between sets, he would take the head off since it was so hot. He had a dresser and he would yell, Susie, give me head. Soon after, he was replaced by Pat Penny, known as his role for the voice actor in Painting the Pirate and SpongeBob SquarePants. In the area the show was in, it was actually quite successful, and the creators wanted the show to expand to other states after the first season. However, the show was being aired alongside other Fox Kids shows, including Disney shows such as Chippendale Rescue Rangers. The show was stealing ratings from other Disney shows, which made Disney CEO Michael Eisner mad. On the last episode, some kids sent an angry letter to us to the studio, and in the fan mail segment, Cooper read the letter out loud, faced the camera, waved the envelope in the air, and said, Okay, you can say all you want about me, but I know where you live, while laughing. Along with this fake death threat, angry letters from parents, and Michael Eisner requesting the show to be cancelled, the show then came to an end. The existence of King Koopa's cool cartoons went largely unknown by the internet until 2005, when user Mia Kono SP posted an article on RetroDrunk.com about the show. The article provides a lot of information, which I'll link in the description. In the article, he states that he owns two full episodes on tape. He donated the theme song to the website, which is now available to watch on YouTube, and is also linked in the description. Mia Kono SP now has little to no online presence nowadays, and if you search his username online, you'll find an eBay account and a Spotify account, and people have attempted to contact him many times in different ways, but to no response. However, a commenter on the article called Obscure Reference state that she was a Koopa Kid on the show and owns a a t-shirt, Fox Kids button, and even a full episode on tape. She has been contacted and may release a full episode online soon, which is a pretty big deal for the search. Aside from the Retro Drunk article, there is known to be a tape of this show stored in the UCLA archives and a listing of the tape. It shows that a few of the people that worked on the show, including Eleanor Burry and Moore, who was quoted earlier, Christopher Bro, Jack Hanoran, Andy Hayward, Jerry Pass, and Stephen J. Abramson. Eleanor Burry and Moore was contacted and provo- provided a lot of information. While she does not have any tapings, she does own a Koopa Troopa helmet and has a lot of memories from working on the show. Christopher Bro was emailed, and according to him, more than 50,000 letters were received in the show's runtime. According to him, it was a live show. Live host Koopa started introducing other animated series with a programming block, with a different live 30-minute show commencing broadcast at 4.30pm daily in front of a live audience. This show was probably the last major live t- children's series ever produced after Soupy Sales, Howdy Doody, etc., and attracted some pretty major Hollywood legends, whom would sit in the audience at times just to reminisce about the old days of live television production, Mel Brooks, Norman Lear amongst them. When asked about the story about the show being cancelled due to the fake Koopa death threat, he claimed that it was fake. Gary Pass, however, has been contacted, and he contradicts this claim, saying that that was the reason the show was cancelled, and Elmore Burry and Moore also claims that it was possible. It is likely that Christopher Brawl was remembering wrong, as he also stated that none of the letters to the show were ever responded to, which has also been proven false from further research. Finishing with the list of people who were, preferred, who were known to word on the show, Jack Hanran sadly passed away in 2008, and both Andy Hayward and Stephen J. Aberson has been contacted with no response. While no full episodes are available, six different clips are available online. The first clip that's available is the intro theme song for the show, which was originally uploaded to Retro Drunk by Miyakono SP. While he did state that he owned two full episodes, and he even stated that he had backed them up on his computer, he has never uploaded them online, and it's unlikely he still has them after all this time. The second available clip it showed Koopa butting into a Muppet Babies episode, announcing a giveaway for Power Glove uploaded to YouTube in 2008 by VHS Robot, who found it on an old VHS tape. The third available clip is a clip of a Thanksgiving marathon uploaded to YouTube in 2018 by Neilco. The last three clips were uploaded to Reddit by user I'm not going to pronounce that after I made a post about the show, with him stating he owned many clips on VHS. He has stated he will convert them to digital once he has the time to, so we can definitely expect to see some other clips soon. The clips feature a promo of the show, a clip of King Koopa taking care of an egg, and a vegetable theater clip. So, yeah, 
I think that this search is super interesting, and I'm excited to see what my clips, my search group finds. I'd like to thank the rest of the King Koopa's Cool Cartoon Search Group Discord server for finding a lot of this information, and I'd like to thank the, goo the guy whose username I can't pronounce for providing three new clips. If you would like to join the search for yourself, I put a link to the Discord server in this video's description. I'll make a follow-up to this video once possible. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.